Hello, my friends! Glad to see you made it. We are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He is alive! My, my friends, I, I want to, to, to encourage you, you know, as we look out into the world today and, and see that, that, boy, the Word of God is truth. And, and many prophecies and many things are, are beginning to happen. We can look out into the world today and see Jesus is truth and his word is truth. You know? Let's go to a little Bible read, my, my friends. I want to help you and get you to understand and realize that there's one thing that's throughout the entire New Testament. It's in every gospel, it's, it's in every part of the New Testament, even throughout Paul's teachings. And, and that is, if you're not willing to lay down your life, your careers, your stuff, to be a part of the gospel, to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, you're, you're not worthy of Jesus. Not worthy. You know? Says many, many are, are called, but few are chosen. And I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it is a choice within you. And at some point, you got to just go for it. You got to put your life into this word as being truth. Right? Either God Almighty in heaven ripped open the ocean and delivered his people on dry ground as they walked through it, or it didn't happen. Right? You know, either we can trust God as, 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 as he fed those people. For 40 years he fed them. Gave them food. By the hand of God, they didn't have to do anything but, but trust God. In the hand of God. You know, it's, it's not fair to I understand this stuff. And the mighty power of God came thousands of years ago. And he's been silent. But he's come. He said, don't, don't fall asleep. It's like a man going on a long journey who, who leaves all his possessions. And, and trust to his servants. You know, what, what are we as his servants going to do while he's gone? And listen, I want to encourage you. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to them again in a parable saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. <clears throat> he sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come. But they refused to come. <clears throat> then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, the fat and calf, have all been butchered, and everything is ready. Come for the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business, the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. <coughs> and that stuff came true already. You know, Titus, one of the rulers of Rome, besieged, you know, Jerusalem for... Three years, they burnt the entire city of Jerusalem right to the ground and murdered pretty much all the people. Took only the, the women and the children and sold them off in, into slavery. And, and, you know, scattered out the Jerusalem all over. And all the Jews. And so this happened. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited do not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite the banquet, invite to the banquet anyone you find. 
So the servants went out to the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. <coughs> but the king came in to see the guests. And he noticed a man standing there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. And the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. And that's the thing. How, how are we going to be a part of the great, the, the great marriage between us and Christ and God and to the kingdom of heaven? It's through our faith. Through our faith in his word and his love for us that all men and women who take refuge in the Lord our God shall be saved. We'll be saved. <clears throat> Let's move over. Let's go to Luke chapter 17, verse 20. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. See, each one of us, we are the holy temple of God. You know, they say, oh, Jesus is coming to, to rapture the church. And, oh, you know, everybody says, oh, we're the official church of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. We, we know God. You know, the Muslims claim it. The, the, the Catholics claim it. The Baptists claim it. The, the Mormons claim it. The, 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 everybody claims it. <clears throat> but this is the truth. All those Worshippers, God seeks, worship God in truth and spirit. They understand, they know. It's not a building, it's not a place. It's not, not even the country of Israel, it's been taken away. It's no more. Israel it is all those who, who wish to be governed by God, or by the King of all kings, Jesus Christ. We surrender our lives and, and our wills to Him. You know, the Lord our Christ comes and says, Hey, it's the end. What do you got to lose? Huh, your career? You got, you got less than three years left. He's coming. And, and are you going to just keep denying it and keep denying it? You know, it says, remember Lot's wife. And she always looks back into... To, to, couldn't trust God. Looking back to, to her, her own hands, into her, into the sinful ways of the life, into the comforts and the pleasures that this world brings. And, and those things are, are, they'll take you from the hand of God. You know? Jesus says, who, who can deliver you from the hand of God? When you have been chosen. And no one. But this is how we know. The world will know you. Me. Or any of us were chosen by God. By our love for one another. But by our willingness to put our faith in, in the gospel. And lay it down. To say it don't matter if I'm the only man on earth that believes in God. I shall not bow down to no other form of religion or worship, you know, but I'll worship the one and only God there is. And Jesus Christ is the, is the Messiah of God, the saving, anointed one of God. You know, Jesus is God. <laughs> Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me, you shall not worship any God. Jesus says, that, that if you guys knew what Moses, who he was talking about, who he's writing about, you would have known who Jesus Christ was and is. For he is God. You know? So listen. <coughs> the kingdom says, the time is coming 
when you will long to see the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running off to after them. For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and the lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And all that stuff happened already? And Jesus rose from the dead and has been glorified. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given up in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot, the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the roof of its house with his goods inside should go down and get them. You know, if, let it go. There's nothing on this earth, in our homes, in, in the stuff we're worth fighting for, we're dying over. The only one thing we're dying over, our faith and our belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which has a promise for us of eternal life in, in a kingdom of no pain. No suffering with God in heaven. And, and that's where our, 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 you know, Jesus was raised from the dead. Our, our faith in our sufferings come from, from the belief that it is so true what he did. You know, we, we, we've laid down our will and our careers to, to have the, the money and the social status and the pats on the back and the recognition for men and women of this earth. We let it go. You know, in the same moment, the day Jesus rose from the dead, it was new. A new heaven and a new earth. And Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the life, and the truth. And there's no other way to the heavens, no other way to God, but through our Lord and Christ. For whoever believes in Jesus Christ says this, God's word is true. It's true. And he said, for Jesus, for God, well, when he rose from, from the dead to prove his word was true, Anybody and everybody on, on earth who did not believe in him, who heard the word, but did not accept it as truth, they were cut off. No more. Our Lord and our Christ is drenched in, in blood from all the, the death that, that has come. He doesn't want to kill or destroy anybody. But we choose it every day. You know, I'm afraid. You know, Jesus says that, that it's like a mustard seed. It starts out little, tiny, small, but once it grows in, in, into faith and, and trust and, and a surrendered heart for our Lord and Christ and His will for the earth. And His will is for all men to, to hear the gospel, to hear the truth, to have a chance for eternal life. And what are we doing today? You know? Are we not being just like those we, we those in his day? They were, they're there for a warning. You know, God has no forgiveness even for, for the fallen angels. There is a wrath of God. And it's on you now. It's on all of us. You know? We need to fear our, our second death. 
We need to fear the, the day we see God in heaven. Not, not, not those, these things here on earth. You know? It is our love for one another. And it starts with us. It's not about the church or, or any of that stuff. It's about us, the individual. Each one of us pulling our own weight. Putting our trust and our faith in His Word. And it's, it's not easy. The, the closer you come to God, the more faithful, the more under attack you become. The more the world hates you. The more nobody wants to hear anything from you. But that, that's just like in the days of Noah. They, they don't care. You know? They, they don't believe it. But, but the day they're thrown into the, to the eternal fire, they're going to have a rude awakening. You know? And then if you understand that, that they're going into the eternal fire, are we doing everything we can to save one of them or any of them from that fire? It says, likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Nobody should go back to work and slave for the devil or the government or any of this stuff. We need to work for our Lord and our Christ. Remember Lot's wife? Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Where, Lord, they asked. And he replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. So, so, at the rapture, when the one that comes, and that, you know, what what is that? That the resurrection is here on earth. Jesus says, oh, we're, "I'm the God of the living, not the God of the dead." You know, He's God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not the God of death. Jesus Christ is the the one and only to to be risen from the the dead. In both body and spirit. But us men, <clears throat> our bodies aren't going to heaven. We're sin. It's corrupted. It's flesh. And we'll have a new body in heaven and we'll be like angels. But you must recognize that the kingdom of heaven is within you right now. The, the, the new city, the new city of Jerusalem, the city of peace. It is peace for you in your hearts, in your minds, to know the one and only living God loves you. He loves you. And then that's the peace. That's the new city. The resurrection of the dead. First the dead shall rise. We're all dead. We're all dead to God. We're all enemies to God unless we come to Him for forgiveness through our Lord in Christ. And recognition and our belief and our faith in His resurrection. In, in the fact that He is the glory of God. You know? He is the one who overcame death. He's the one who has overcome the sins of the world. And even our faith is in that. You know? We don't want to lose our way into this world. The television and that, it, it, it's total distraction and um, taking you constantly and putting your mind into a mindset, a mindset of the devil and greed, selfishness and, and this golden image, this image of what a man on earth is supposed to be like and it's worthless. There's only one image we should strive to be, and that's the image of Jesus Christ. An image of love, mercy, forgiveness. 
You know, you ain't coming into the kingdom of heaven unless you can forgive sins. God says forgive, so he will forgive your sins. You know, we, we, got, it's, we don't suffer through, through our lives because it's a lie. No, we suffer through our lives because it's truth. He did rise from the dead. God did rip the ocean wide open for, to deliver his people. And it's trust in him. Faith in him. We must begin this relationship with our Lord in Christ. You know? Many religions today, and churches today across America, it's... It's, it's messed up that they've twisted the word of God. Yeah, they preach the word, but, it, but it's all about you and yourself and, and how you can better yourself and how you can prosper and how you can have more money and more of this and you, you, you. But really, isn't it about the will of God for all men on the earth? Aren't you supposed to lay down your will? Aren't you supposed to lay down your life to take up the life of Jesus Christ? It is to the word of love and compassion and mercy for, for our, our entire city and neighborhood. That message ain't being taught. Not by no one. Love it, it conquers all things. You know, if you can get just one, one unbeliever, one sinner to turn from, to, from sin to love for our Lord and Christ, so every angel in heaven shouts out with joy, Hallelujah, God! We saved another one. You know, don't don't expect a whole bunch of bodies to go rising into heaven 